um, I thought it would be kind of interesting to just start at kind of what is the state of play around utility money and what it's going towards and showing this massive discrepancy between um, just the sheer profit that utilities have and the fact that utility bills are going up and that ratepayers are being shut off from their from these essential services. Um, so I guess I'll just I'll start there and um, have several resources that I can also pass along. Um, but I think, you know, really this past two years during the pandemic, um, I think we've all really become super familiar with just the shutoff crisis. And this is a problem that's existed for a long time. And I think the pandemic just really kind of put a spotlight on it um, and just showing how many, like millions of households um, really struggle to um, stay on top of utility bills and, and keep the lights on. Um, and so we did a report um, with Bailout Watch, when was that, like last year, um, kind of tracking disconnections. So for a year, we were collecting disconnection data um, from the PUCs and PSCs across the country that actually um, keep that information public. Um, and you know, quickly found out that there's a lot of states that don't track that information. Um, so all the work that Gail and, and Jessica are leading on in the debt, ju debt jubilee um, group is, is really amazing. Um, but so the report really highlighted that just within one year um, in the 17 states that we were able to collect data from, um, nearly a million disconnections occurred. And the 16 companies that, or utilities that were responsible for those disconnections actually profited um, just you know, a ton of money. They received um, $1.25 billion in CARES Act um, funding from um, legislation that was passed during the pandemic. Um, and that money did not go towards helping utility customers. It went to shareholders. So um, utilities actually saw their shareholder dividends increase during the pandemic as other companies um, were suffering economically. Um, and so I kind of lay this out just to show that like there's a huge problem. There's so many problems with the utility system we have right now. Kind of looking at the money side of things, that's one of them. And so given that, it's even more ridiculous that utilities are actually using um, ratepayer money to fund trade associations, many of whom um, spend millions of dollars on campaigns to discredit climate science, to fight um, clean energy policy like rooftop solar expansion, um, and just a, a huge laundry list of other things. Um, so we basically sought out to address this problem. Um, and one of the ways we saw um, some improvement was through FERC and addressing their accounting system. So right now, the way the system is set up, um, when utility regulators report to FERC, um, they have to kind of disaggregate where um, certain expenditures are going. And there are two accounts for this, one that is recoverable from rate payers, um, and then one account that is non-recoverable. Um, so currently trade dues associate or trade dues to these um, groups like the Edison Electric Institute, the American Gas Association, um, get put into the recoverable account, meaning those funds can be recovered from rate payers. Um, and our petition um, is really advocating for a simple fix in that we move those trade dues to a non-recoverable account. So um, essentially utilities could not recover that from those expenses from rate payers. Um, it wouldn't stop utilities from um, supporting these trade dues or these trade associations, but it would be a huge step in ensuring that rate payers aren't bankrolling these anti-climate groups. So, um, that petition was brought to FERC last year. Um, and then in December, the commission actually voted in a three to one majority to move forward with addressing the petition. 
So now we're in this new phase where FERC has issued a notice of inquiry um, and they propose several questions um, that asks for the public to provide input on how FERC should tackle rate recovery um, and how they should improve um, utility transparency. So we are once again pushing on FERC to make this simple change with the accounting system, but to even go a step further and consider entirely banning um, rate recovery from um, rate payers. So New York actually um, is the first state that's passed um, a law around this um, that entirely bans um, recovery from rate payers for trade due um, payments. So um, it's, you know, it's a really um, important case in terms of creating more accountability and transparency within the utility space. Um, and so we're, we're trying to mobilize as many organizations as possible around this sign on letter um, and really just pushing for to actually take action and, and use their authority to fix this problem. So um, can definitely drop all these things that I've mentioned in the chat and happy to open it up to questions.